So I never thought this day would come. I'm using Windows 8, but I'm not exactly using Windows 8. I'm using Windows 7.5. As you can see here, when I press the start button, this is what happens, not this. Now this is what most of you guys are used to if you're using Windows 8, and this is why most of you are avoiding Windows 8, because this on a desktop makes no sense at all. Using like the Netflix app, for instance. I mean, I like a lot of the apps. They're, they're simple, they're easy to use, they're really designed for a tablet. And if I was using a tablet, I would really enjoy this, but it's just cumbersome with a mouse and keyboard. I mean, I'd, I would rather go just straight to Netflix.com and watch it that way. Um, and I really just, I don't use this on a desktop. I mean, I know some of you guys like the fact that you can just type whatever you want and it'll come up, but that's what we used to be able to do with this. Just type, oh my God, there it is. So what I'm gonna do is show you, you know, exactly what I'm running here. Um, there's a few different options. So let's go ahead and start talking about that. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do to turn your system from Windows 8 to Windows 7.5 is get something to replace, uh, or I guess, add in a start button. There's nothing to replace, so we need to add a start button. Now, the options, the big options are Start 8 and Start is Back. I'm using Start is Back, and I'm about to tell you why. Now, with Start 8, um, first off, it's a little bit more expensive. Let's go over here to the uh, purchase price. $5.99, and here's what it does. Now, let's suppose you want, you know, to pick this up for multiple computers. So you want five computers, right? Five computers is going to cost you 25 bucks. Now, with Start is Back, you get two PCs for three dollars, already a better deal, and then five bucks for five PCs. It's also just a better program uh, entirely, and I'll tell you why. Start 8 runs in the background as a service. This does not run as a service. It's almost the exact same thing uh, as the Windows 7 Start. It's like a true start button for Windows 8. Uh, it integrates with everything. Uh, everything works perfectly. Uh, for instance, let's say you have Start 8. Um, some of the things are a little buggy, like if you want to go and, and click Recent Items for Word, it kind of freezes the program sometimes, I've, I've noticed. Um, just some of the things are a little choppy when you're searching for things. This one works just like Windows 8. There's my recent documents. There you can see them. So, and, and that didn't freeze the program at all. It, it works perfectly. We also have this up here, the Start screen. So, Start is a... So Start is Back is the option. The only reason I would use Start 8 is if you're someone who wants to maintain uh, the Windows 8 style, and you can do that here. This is a picture I totally just stole this from uh, softpedia.com. But uh, this is you can also do this as a style option, uh, where it essentially just sh you know shrinks down the Windows 8 Start uh, page into an area that's just a little bit bigger uh, than the uh, I guess the Start button over here. So I, I don't care for that. I want, you know, desktop functionality and I want it to be like Windows 7, but I, I like a lot of the features in Windows 8 and I also like the speed of Windows 8. So go ahead and uh, just go ahead and buy this, guys. It'll be the best $5 that you spend on Windows 8. It'll make your life so much better. It's totally worth the money and we want to support these developers. Uh, they did a hell of a job and it's better than Start 8. Let's go over here and configure this because um, you can do a lot of things with this. So right click, click on properties and let's go through it. Let me go ahead and minimize this because that's ugly. All right, this is just like Windows 7. You can configure everything that shows up, and you uh, also tell it how many recent items to show. I've got 20 showing up because um, that fills up my entire area here because I'm using small icons, and I like that. Over here, we have our appearance options. Now, you can do something that looks more like Metro if you like. I like the square, clean Windows 8-style look, so I'm selecting that. And uh, we also have several options here for the Start button. You can do the traditional Start Orb. Uh, we've got a Raise the World Start Orb. I'll show you what that one looks like. It, it was made for Windows 7. But there it is. You know, when you click it, it turns green. Uh, like I said, it was made for Windows 7, so it's a little, in my opinion, ugly. I think this one looks cleaner. So I stick with that one. Uh, maybe one of you guys can make a, a, you know, a new one. But you guys can get tons of these things. All you do is, um, let me just cancel out of that. All you do is you can grab them over on DeviantArt or any, any other website. You know, stuff like this. You go over here and click the download button. It'll download that file. And once you have that downloaded, you come over here and click add and just navigate to whatever file that was and click open and then it'll be here as an option very easy now this will allow you to change the translucency so if you want it to be opaque or if you want it to be translucent you can mess with that so you can see everything else you can do here uh, I also love this check this out all programs yay so it's just like Windows XP I loved the way that worked I always hated the Windows 7 where everything just would appear here and you have to scroll around endlessly so I like that a lot better I hear your hotkeys and also will just basically uh, tell the computer how this program should work. 
Now you can set it up to show the start, start screen when you start your computer, but why would you want to do that? We're trying to get away from that, so we're going to show the desktop. Now when you press the Windows key, you can set that up to show the start menu, or show the start screen, or just do nothing. If you want to get to the start screen with a hotkey, you can set it up as such. And you know, you can set it up as Windows key plus control, shift, or alt, either one. I've got it Windows control, so when I press Windows control, it will go here in case I ever want to go here and do something. Like, you know, I can go here to look at my Steam tile, which is pretty much a useless app if you already have Steam installed, but you know, whatever. Let me get the hell out of that. And this is also nice when you're in the modern apps. If you close one, um, you can tell it to either go back to your desktop or go to your start screen or go to the last environment. Um, I'm going to have it go back to my desktop. I should have configured that earlier, but there we go. All right, this will uh, configure how the uh, bottom left corner clicks respond to different things. And here's something that I love. It gets rid of the freaking charms. So you just I just disabled all of this stuff because, let me show you, turn this back on. Charms, charms, yes. Oh, God, charms. Now watch. Go over here. And there they are, those damn charms. They appear when you're in the corner. Now you can still get to these charms even if you turn this off because there's a hotkey. And the hotkey is Windows key plus C. And that brings up your charms. So say if you wanted to go into your settings or something, uh, go into your control panel, personalization, whatever, you can do that from here. So just Windows key C. That's a much better way to do it on a desktop. It makes sense for a mouse and keyboard, not freaking touch. All right, let's go check out Advanced. Now I've done this, this is optional. It'll just rename your start screen apps to apps and uh, it'll only keep your modern apps there. That way when you're on your start screen, all you see here on the start screen are your modern apps. You don't see like a W Premiere and FUBAR and you know all of your other apps. Just your modern apps are gonna be shown here and that really separates this uh, from your desktop, which is you know where I do all my work, right here on the desktop. So I hope this video has helped you remove some of the suck from Windows 8. Uh, in future videos, I'll show you guys how to do some registry hacks to remove the charms if you want to do it that way. Uh, also some registry hacks to enable NumLock when Windows 8 starts because it sometimes does not, just doesn't enable itself and it drives me insane. Also for some of you guys who are looking for the right click run as admin option, uh, let's find something. Um, sometimes that's gone when you install Windows 8. I'll show you guys how to put that back in with a simple registry hack. Uh, and there'll be several other things that are going to make it run faster and will also improve the user interface just a little bit uh, to help you guys out. One last thing, uh, we're going to get Wendell in here and we're going to talk about Shadow Copy because that is gone in Windows 8. It's a glaring omission. Uh, I know there's an alternative, but it is not the same. I don't care what anybody says, it's not the same. Uh, so we're going to show you guys some command line hacks to make it kind of work and we're just going to hope that Microsoft puts it into Service Pack 1. But for now, you should have a better Windows 8 experience on your desktop. So please subscribe and also go over to techsyndicate.com. Check out what's going on, on our website, some new indie games, all kinds of fun stuff going on, Bitcoin mining. Uh, we're about to do several, um, we're about to do a lot of upgrades to the forum, so go over there and check that out. Last but not least, you guys can own this music and we have some new music coming soon. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.